good afternoon. You're all very welcome to the Institute for International and European Affairs. Um, a couple of practicalities, emergency escape, the way you came, I think, unless you have wings, yes. And um, telephones, please, onto silent. Not necessarily completely off, because I understand that I should encourage you to tweet yeah. at, um, at IIEA, I believe, if you're one of the Twitterati, is that, is that uh, um, we, we are um, delighted to today have with us uh, Dirk Beckers from the uh, Innovation and Networks Executive Agency um, in, in Brussels. He's Executive Director of, of that agency. Um, Dirk has, I think, something like uh, three decades experience with the Commission Services um, and more than 10 years as Executive Director of, of, the, of the agency. Um, a lot of experience in the field of transport, energy and, and uh, research. Um, he has, I think, uh, he has influence over very considerable budgets so he's able to um, help things happen at the European level. And he's going to talk to us today about connecting Europe, securing supply and sustainability. The presentation uh, will be on the record, and then we'll have a discussion where the Chatham House rule will apply. Dirk, can I invite you to address us, please? Of course. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Well, good, good afternoon. Good morning. I was going to say it's a bit later, so good afternoon, all. Uh, I'm pleased to be here just to explain to you uh, a bit more about CEF and uh, how it's going to help or how it's helping um, the investment in, in, in energy. Um, I should tell you first that I'm more on the practical side, so I think quite often you have political people coming to explain a bit about policy. I'm more of the practical side because, the, as you'll see in a second, it's the Commission who decides on the policy and I'm taking, I'm, my colleagues and myself, we're taking care of the implementation. But Nevertheless, I think it's maybe good that you see a bit how things are working in Brussels. And so, if I go, I have to turn myself a bit to see my own side. So, I don't know whether you can see it in the back, but so uh, the agency was established already more than 10 years ago, but then in 2014, the Commission decided to expand from only transport, which is what we were managing before, to the whole CEF program. And CEF is the Connecting Europe facility, and it's, it's got three parts. It's transport, energy, and ICT. Um, and so we're managing these three parts. But then the Commission decided as well to give us parts of the Horizon 2020 program to manage. So meaning we have quite some budget on, uh, which I will show in a second, on transport and energy and the fields of uh, Horizon 2020. But so we have, um, I will uh, just highlight a bit a few things, meaning that we are managing the whole life cycle of a project. Um, we assist the Commission as well in the monitoring of the transport corridors and of course what more of interest for you today on the PCI, so the projects of common, of common interest. So just to tell you a bit of why I just mentioned that I'm not in charge of the policy but in the implementation. You see here a bit an overview of the, how it works between an executive agency in the Commission and the Commission services. Um, there are six executive agencies, just to give you some background. Um, the agency I'm director of has got uh, the biggest budget because SEV is quite an important budget. And so the Commission defines the policy, as you can see, so the whole strategy, objectives and priority areas, areas are, are decided by them. So if there's an area that you're not pleased to, that's not covered, uh, don't shoot me, but uh, <laughs> I would say uh, you should contact the Commission, of course, you can pass the message to me too. The Commission selects the project that will be financed. Uh, it will take program decision and at the end it will evaluate the program and look as well at the agency performance. Now, this being said, as you can see at the right hand side, the agency we turn policy into action, meaning that once the Commission has decided on the program, we organize the call for proposals. So if there are your problems, then you can shoot me or you can address yourself to me. We monitor, and that's I think the main part, the whole financial, the technical and financial implementation of projects. Um, giving assistance to beneficiaries, making pre-financings, pre intermediate payments, visits on the spot to see whether the project has been realized, 
and so all in all to ensure a sound financial management. Now to, just to say a few words more on what I mentioned at the beginning about the budget. So you can, as you can see there, the two main projects or, or programs that we're managing is uh, CEF and Horizon 2020. On CEF you can see on the right hand side you see a bit the budget repartitioning. So you can see that the huge budget is spent on, on transport and that's uh, as well and that was a novelty in the in the previous in this or the present finance perspective that part of the cohesion fund as well is managed by our agency so this was in the past was it was all done by indirect management so the, the the concerned member states they got the budget from the commission and they were managing it as they thought it would be okay but now the commission has decided that part of the cohesion fund and then parts in particular on transport would be managed by our agency. So it's the commission now who is deciding on which projects are being managed, which is, I would say, a bit of a revolution. and got quite some feedback, uh, negative in the beginning from the concerned member states, but that has uh, over overcome by now. And then, of course, uh, we have 4.5 billion that we're managing on CEF Energy, and then a uh, small part on Telecom, and then we have 5.3 billion on Horizon 2020. Now, for those who weren't there when I said it a few minutes ago, what is important to know, I think, is that there are possibilities or there are people who are working on Horizon 2020 in particular. You should consider that there might be possibilities within the CEF to implement or to exploit your project. So I, I will come back to that in, in a second as well. But the, the fact that the Commission put in our agency, trend, sorry, Horizon 2020 as well, has got advantages which I will explain in a second and which could be very interesting for you. But so at the moment, uh, for this financial perspective period, our agency is managing almost 34 billion euros over the period. We have at the moment more than 1500 actions or, or grant agreements that we signed with beneficiaries and that will grow to around 2000 by 2020. And we, okay, the staff, we, we uh, I started the agency in 2007 with two secretaries or one secretary now we're 260, so <laughs> there's a, a small evolution, I would say, in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the growing up of the agency. But so the, the CEF program supports in particular, that's I think important to know for those who don't know the program, the development of high performing, efficient interconnected trans European networks uh, on transport, energy and ICT. <coughs> and it's, the idea is to fill in the missing links in the European uh, transport and energy um, field, I would say. Now, what can INIA, what's I, in my opinion the added value of the agency? Um, and I, I put it in four blocks. I mean, I think over the years, and I think that's the reason why the Commission decided as well to hand over to the agency more projects as of 2014, is that we have established uh, a good track record in project management. I mean, before we had, before the agency was created, uh, and I will talk now for transport because that was the only thing that the agency was managing in the beginning. On transport projects, the Commission sometimes had delays of more than a year or two years and a half to make intermediate payments. Now we're up to 30, 40 days uh, be be between the moment we get the payment request and, and it's uh, being implemented. Um, I mentioned as well that we're giving quite some support to beneficiaries, but important for the Commission as well is that we raise the second part, that we raise the visibility of the EU support. Because too often still, there are complaints about, I would say, European citizens. They say, but we have no clue what the Commission is doing. We have no clue what the CEF program is for, and even less what the Horizon 2020 program is doing. So that's why, as well, we try to increase the visibility by making brochures with success stories, by going on the spot, by uh, participating in public events. And so, I mean, um, if for one or other reason there are on Irish projects you would like to do something in particular, don't hesitate to call me or to contact us. I mean, if, if possible, uh, we will come and then help you in, in organizing things or, or even in participating with, with elements events there. Um, so we highlight the performance. I mentioned as well that um, the Commission is sometimes being looked at that, okay, you're spending billions of euros on different projects and we don't know what, what, what's the result? So we're trying to put more an accent on, uh, on, the, on the results to see things that are happening. And then um, I would say as well, the last part is synergies and harmonization. So since we're managing different programs, 
uh, of course, we try to go for an organized approach in procedures so the beneficiaries who have, for instance, SEF programs or SEF projects and Horizon, that they don't have different uh, approaches and that we try to simplify as much as possible there as well. The synergy part is, and that's um, something I, I mentioned slightly before, but which I would like to highlight, is that um, since we're having SEF and Horizon 2020, we try to see whether there are synergies and avoid as well overlaps because sometimes you can imagine that between a, 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 a Horizon 2020, let's say a transport or energy project, might go in the same direction as financing that we could do on Horizon, on SEF, sorry. And therefore we're looking into this and trying to avoid this, um, but as well try to see how we can get synergies and in particular how, as I mentioned before, how people who have developed an Horizon 2020 project, and I know in Ireland we have as well quite some Horizon 2020 projects ongoing, there might be a, a means to, uh, to help you in the implementation or exploitation of it in the SEF program. So that's uh, something you should look into or something where we as agency could help you as well to, to tell you what are the possibilities uh, in that sector. So uh, why do we have the 10T, 10T policy? Of course, what is important is that we promote <coughs> the interconnections and interoperability of the national uh, networks. Uh, because the well-connected networks are, of course, the backbone of the EU's energy system. So whatever we can do to uh, encourage this is, is important. And then on the 10 year regulation is there to fix the priorities on, on what should be developed. Um, electric line storage, smart grids, etc. Anyway, I put the PCIs in the middle because you can imagine that for us as well, for the Commission, but for you as well, the development of the PCIs is an import, play an important role in, uh, in achieving the goals and the commitments that have been set for the European Union in, in the near future. Because uh, the 2020 and 2030 climate and energy strategies, as you know, they increase the share of renewables uh, and the in electricity interconnection targets up to 15% by 2030. So, I mean, there are this definitely a necessity, and I know in Ireland they're still slightly behind schedule to get to the 10%, so I'm sure that uh, the SEF program could, could help there and uh, for the future in particular. Um, okay, this is a bit the organization of the PCIs. I guess I don't have to explain to you how many PCIs there are, uh, but in particular of importance and on this overview are the 110 electricity and smart grids. And of course for Ireland you have a particular interest in the Northern Seas um, part where um, the development of the PCIs will contribute to better regional development, but as well to a more structured implementation within Europe. Um, of course, um, the, f the first direct link, and that's I think to reassure you, the Celtic interconnector is very important for Ireland. And I can tell you, even though I'm not supposed to, to make policy statements, but I would like to tell you that this is, as well for the European Commission uh, and the agency as such, a very important uh, connecting uh, thing, I guess in particular in the light of the Brexit uh, for you as well, it's very important, but just to reassure you that you can rely on, on the agencies and the Commission support to, to develop this further. Of course, apart from that, there's not only the interconnector, there are in, in this part on Northern Sea, as you can see on the slide, um, there are grid reinforcements that are being organized between Denmark and Germany and in the northern part of Germany, but as well new links between Belgium and the UK, and uh, the UK and France are, are being developed. But okay, I won't go in detail on the other parts. Now, what's the portfolio that we're managing? Just to give you a, a rough idea, I said, okay, you saw the global budget that we're managing, but then in particular now on the energy portfolio, um, we have, uh, as you can see on the right side, so far since the start of 2014, we have uh, 117 actions that we are funding uh, for a total amount of 2.4 billion uh, with a total value, I would say, of, four, of 6 billion euros. So it's quite, quite a, a solid impact. Um, you can see that all sectors are involved. Of course, it's mainly electricity and gas where we have most of the, of the of the projects. There's still a lot of studies, so I, you see that we're getting now closer to implementation, but that is something I, I hope will grow in future. But just a few examples maybe that I could mention about projects that have come out of, of our portfolio and that have been finalized, because from the whole of portfolio from 17, we've already finalized 40, so 40 have really been achieved. 
And there's one important that respect to there's a, a works action between um, between Alitus, which is in Lithuania, and then the Lithuania-Polish border, which has allowed for the first time to disconnect or to open a bit the the grids to the of the Baltic countries and to link them with Western Europe. So there was really a very important uh, issue there to uh, to end the energy isolation of Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, where this was done in 15 and 16, and the Commission co-funded around 27 billion euros. Then, of course, I should not forget to mention the two studies for the Green Link interconnected that have already been uh, financed. Um, so these have been, uh, and uh, one of them is ongoing, the other one is closed. And then rather new, as you can see here, is that on CO2 and smart grids, uh, I would say I'm not too pleased to say that's only a limited number of actions, uh, but this uh, should be growing because we were really pushing there as well from the Commission to, to develop further on, on smart grids in particular, uh, because there is definitely a need to increase the integration of renewable resources into the distribution and transmission networks, uh, and so therefore we're pushing to get more projects there. And for CO2 as well, uh, efforts to transfer the high quantities of CO2 away from the heavy production areas to um, storage facilities under the seabed of the North Sea. So this is a bit um, the, the, the global envelope. Um, what I would like to say further is to go back then to Ireland. Um, I mean, I mentioned most of them already, but you, so you see the the PCIs that we are financing at this moment that are actively being financed. Okay, you have the two gas um, projects, but then of course in particular we have the uh, the Celtic connector and interconnector, sorry, and then the the Green Link, which is um, which uh, are are very important for Ireland and which we are as I said very actively financing. Now I should say as well for for um, for all of you that. I would say that I'm particularly pleased with the management of projects by Ireland, uh, and it's not only for energy, but uh, as, I, as I mentioned to a few colleagues before, uh, as well for transport, we see a very, very good performance uh, in Ireland uh, compared to quite some other uh, countries in, in Europe, I would say, or from the European Union, you're performing at, a, I would say, at the higher top of, of performance. Now, this is not only appreciated by, by the agency, by the Commission, but I think it's important for you as well to know that uh, when you come with projects, we take them very serious. I must say, I will not mention names, but there are certain countries when they come with new projects, I reflect wise before I think it could be a good idea, but just to thank you as well for the very good execution uh, that you have here in Ireland. And I mentioned them now, okay, but the four in particular, of course, that we are uh, PCIs that we're looking at, are the, um, the two gas ones, which at the bottom, you see the amounts uh, that of support that are given, uh, 0.9 for the, uh, the MOFAT interconnection and uh, 6.5, sorry, for the Iceland maybe underground storage. But of course, the two main uh, PCIs that we're financing or co-financing better is the, uh, the Celtic interconnector and then the Green Link. Both of them, uh, we expect uh, that quite soon you will come for a request, I guess, for financing for the implementation and, and as I mentioned before um, we're really looking forward to, to assist you in, in the development of them because of course uh, after uh, I guess that after the Brexit uh, you will be particularly interested in the, in the Celtic interconnector so that's clear something that from our side as well um, we think it's quite import important to develop um, so I think that I'm so the way ahead, so uh, I mean, uh, we're getting close to the end of the finance perspective period, the actual ones, at the end of 18. As you know, the period goes to 2020. And so, of course, at this moment, um, the Commission has introduced uh, the proposal for the new CEF2, where um, the idea is to increase even or to strengthen the environmental dimension of CEF, where the idea in the proposal is that 60% of the budget will contribute to climate objectives. So. Uh, that's a very important target. And for that, we requested a budget of 42.2 billion euros uh, for the total of CEF, of which 8.65 uh, billion um, is for, um, is for uh, energy. So as I mentioned, we, we want to strengthen the environmental dimension. 
And then, of course, in particular, this will help if that budget comes through. We'll have to see now in the discussions with the budget authority in how far they will follow the Commission in its request. But uh, I can say that, okay, given the importance of energy, there's quite some positive, uh, I would say, openness, openness and opening from the budget authority to, to come to a, a, a rather high budget. I'm not sure whether we get the full budget, because if I see at the previous financial perspectives as well, they were cut nevertheless, but we do expect anyway, given the importance of the whole energy and transport area, that there will be quite some uh, assistance there to help reinforce the, the energy union and to fulfill the commitments under the Paris Agreement. So that's surely something um, that we will uh, think is, is very, it would be very important. Some conclusions maybe? Um, okay, so I hope that uh, it was maybe a fast one, but okay, I wanted to leave enough time for some questions. Um, but I hope that you, you see a bit better on what SEV is doing for the development of the energy sector um, and how, how it's better, the secure energy, energy system is secured better. Um, so we, 50% as well, that's important to know that 50% of the energy budget so far is allocated to electricity, PCIs and smart grids. And so this is quite important in, in helping in the energy <coughs> transition. And as I mentioned, in the next period, it will even be more important, uh, our contribution there. And then the last line, which I mentioned before, it's because uh, I asked my colleagues last uh, Friday before I went on weekend, I told them, give me now elements I should ask people in Ireland to improve. And the feedback was, we don't see things that you can improve. You can always improve, I say, but normally when I, I, I ask them when I go to speak somewhere, and I asked to, to have some things that can be improved. Uh, there is clearly always some elements or uh, that people say, yeah, this, uh, that country always delays and prog projects are not mature. And the only thing I should say is that the cooperation is excellent. So thanks again for all of this. Um, and I've seen it myself personally in transport a few years ago. The cooperation is good, promises are kept um, and the execution is okay. So my end word would be that, okay, Really, you can rely on, on our support to help you when, with the further development of PCIs. Um, but as well, with if you have, I saw that you have quite some Horizon 2020 projects as well that are being developed here or being done. Um, I would say, if you have questions, don't hesitate to come or to me or my colleagues. Uh, I guess, like, like you said, uh, the information and, and the, my presentation will be shared and there you will see at the end the addresses on where you can get information because on the agency's website you have uh, um, a, a fish and overview of each every project that we're financing so you can if you're interested and you have the time to look a bit outside of Ireland to see what's being done in the rest of Europe you can have access to all what's being done there so that's one element but on the other hand I would say don't hesitate to call us if for instance uh, you're working on a Horizon project and you think it might have potential to be exploited, to be implemented, but you don't know very well where the financing should come through. Let's give us a call, give me a call. Uh, I'm sure we can help you. We are, I have as well, I made a proposal to the commission that the agency could be some kind of a, of a help desk or, or a, a one-stop shop point where you could come with questions like this on financing on, or, or of course, or today if you want to know when will be a call on this or that, you can ask us. But the ideas, or my idea would be that indeed on financing, because that's getting more and more, I would say, um, not problematic, but important to know what are the possibilities, including possibilities to combine with private financing, because we have as well launched recently the first blending call so that people can really see um, that for certain projects, the banks are maybe not interested to help you unless if there is some support of the commission. And so we've launched the first project where uh, part is a grant so they get money to start off so that the bank agrees as well to finance and to take a lower risk than on, on the financing of the project. So this is, these are kind of things where we are working on and I would say if you have uh, any questions, issues in that sense, don't hesitate to call me. Thank you Thank very you. much.